Spoiler alert, the Death Note movie is bad. I mean, it looks like the producers almost went intentionally out of their way to make the movie adaptation the opposite of the anime. Everything from the characters to the plot to the themes and ideas that define Death Note as a legendary anime were changed for the adaptation. Now, the changes to the storyline could be argued as necessary for the sake of time. Obviously, you can't fit a 37-episode anime into an hour and 40-minute film. But what they could have done was work to keep the feeling, the storyline, and theming of the movie in line with the original. And they didn't. The goal of this adaptation should have been to bring the questions and ideas that are so prominent in the anime to a new audience with a live-action adaptation. But instead, this film was basically a movie based off of Death Note that used Death Note fans to generate revenue. In other words, the movie wasn't made to bring Death Note and its mind-opening questions to more people. It was made to make money off of the fans of the anime. And it didn't even do that well! Where's my potato chip scene, Light? How am I supposed to make fun of you without a potato chip? And that's just my point. This movie strayed so far from the original work of art that Light maniacally biting a potato chip with the gusto of a teenager touching his first boob wouldn't have fit into this movie. And if there's no potato chips, there's no Death Note. I'm going to get into everything that went wrong with this movie adaptation in a minute. But I want you to know that I've watched the Death Note anime three times now. It's in my top three favorite animes of all time, and I know I'm not alone when I rank it that high. There's a reason that everyone who watches anime has seen Death Note. It's not a coincidence that this anime is still rated among the best after a decade since its release. It hits home difficult questions that people grapple with on a daily basis. What is justice? Is death a just answer to a crime? How far can someone go to be the good guy without becoming a bad guy? Is there a line that can be crossed there? And does power over others ultimately corrupt one's sense of justice? The polarizing definitions of justice that Light and L battle over in the anime are two sides of the same coin. It would be awesome to make a video going over these questions, but guess what? The movie completely drops these essential themes. Instead, we're left with a film that uses the same title but in no way resembles the Death Note anime. So grab a potato chip and take a seat as we break open this shallow shell of a film and expose it for the unbearable sham of an adaptation that it is. Puh! To correctly analyze the Death Note movie, we're going to have to go back into the anime to see what it did right versus what the movie didn't. That means there will be spoilers for the movie and anime. You've been warned. The anime follows the story of Light Yagami, a perfect student who is about to graduate high school at the top of his class. When Light picks up the Death Note, we begin to see the structure of Light's moral compass and his version of justice as he contemplates using the notebook. Throughout the show, Light uses the Death Note to punish evildoers, killing those who have hurt or wronged others for their crimes. He's basically Robin Hood, but minus the gold, the hood, and all the morals. So, basically not Robin Hood. Light believes that killing criminals is justified because each of their deaths is one more step towards creating a perfect world free from crime. Light basically takes Hammurabi's code, an eye for an eye, and injects it with steroids. He believes that those who have hurt others must be punished completely by eliminating them from society. Only through the elimination of evil can justice truly be served. You could almost say that Light's brand of justice is the absence of evil. If he eliminates evil, how could there be anything else besides justice? Light believes that the ends justify the means, meaning that despite creating himself as the ultimate mass murderer who not only kills evil people but also kills those who attempt to catch him, all those deaths, innocent or otherwise, are justified in the creation of a new world. And in this new world, Light, or Kira as he's known to the public, is judge, jury, and executioner. That's Light's brand of justice, a world without crime. A world ruled by a god of death who watches out for good doers while acting as a martyr, corrupting his own goodness for the the sake of humanity, and Delight believes that he was chosen to take up that torch because the Death Note came to him. In his own words, And when I first got that notebook all those years ago, I knew I had to do it. No, I was the only one who could. Light believed himself to be the chosen god of the new world, the only one who could create and maintain a world free of corruption and evil, the chosen martyr to fix a crumbling society. Now, let's take that analysis of Light Yagami and compare it to what we see from Light Turner. Light Turner is the live-action Light who stars in the Netflix original movie. Right off the bat, there's a major difference between Light Yagami and Light Turner. And I'm not talking about the frosted tips, but se seriously, who, who is this guy? Justin Timberlake from a decade ago? Get your shit together, shitty light. You're making the room dark. Get it? That's a light pun. 
<clears throat> anyway, in the first scene of the movie, Light is shown selling homework answers to another student. It's not a good sign when literally our first interaction with Light Turner contradicts the Light we know from the anime. This scene shows that Light Turner not only has a skewed moral compass to start, but that he is perfectly willing to break rules for his advantage. This is not at all what we see from Light Yagami, and it ruins any potential character development for Light. What made Light Yagami such an interesting character was that we could see how the power of the Death Note corrupted his brain over the years. If we could use some D&D terms, there's no doubt that Light Yagami started out as a lawful good character. However, the Death Note corrupted his morals until he became more of a lawful evil character that only rolls critical hits. During the anime, Light gives up possession of the Death Note partway through, reverting back to his lawful good self. This reverting is important because it shows the audience just how far Light has been corrupted by the power of the Death Note. It brings up the question of just just how much of Light's reasoning is his own doing, or whether he's been completely corrupted by this killing power. We get to see that development of evil within Light, watch it revert when he forgets his memories, and then return when he regains the Death Note. It's almost like a reverse exorcism. This change is most prominent when L asks Light to take advantage of Nisa's feelings for him, and Light refuses. But when Light gets the Death Note back, he immediately returns to using Nisa for his own personal gain. This personality change between being being Light and being Kira is essential to understanding the goals and philosophy of Death Note, but the movie completely disregards this. In the movie, there is no good Light to start with. The Light we're given seeks revenge, is emotional, and isn't overly smart at all. I mean, he literally brings out the notebook at school and shows Mia how it works because he has a crush on her. It's basically a high-stakes game of I'll show you mine if you show me yours. This Light is literally being ruled by his hormonal instincts in that moment, which is something we never see in the anime. He's a weak character who is never in control of what's happening around him. We see this weakness in his interactions with Mia, Misa's live-action counterpart. His choices are based on emotion rather than intelligence, and because of that, he basically loses all control of his situation. This is a stark contrast to Anime Light, who is basically in control of every situation at all times until the near end of the show. In fact, we see how distraught Light gets when he's not in control because he almost breaks down when working to get his sister back from Mellow. Movie Light never has control of any situation, making him seem like an extremely unreliable and weak character. Now, I know it's difficult to adapt a series into a film, and I'm perfectly fine giving the director leeway because of that, but the basics of the anime should shine through in the film, and, well, Light doesn't shine very bright. More light puns. Finger guns! <sighs> Anyway, Light Yagami is a genius. He plans his moves 50 steps ahead just like a professional chess player. To him, every death, including his father's, is justified if it's in the path to creating a perfect world. Light Turner just doesn't follow this character arc. He really doesn't have an arc at all. I mean, unless his penis is curved, because that's the only growing he did in this film! Not only does he fight back against Mia when she decides Light's father needs to die, but she basically controls what happens to Light throughout the movie. Instead of Light taking advantage of Mia thanks to his own corruption, Mia ends up taking advantage of him. Instead of blaming Light for the deaths of the FBI agents and seeing the growth of his god complex, we see that growth in Mia. Light's movie persona doesn't feel that the ends justify the means. When L starts closing in on him, Light wants to stop instead of pushing forward. He isn't corrupted at all by the power of the Death Note. It doesn't push him to become a god or a douche. It doesn't push him to accept L's challenge. Instead, we see the most change in character character progression take place in Mia. In the anime, Misa is really just a bubbly, overly infatuated girl who is so blinded by her infatuation that she would do anything Light asked her to do. She was completely usable for whatever Light wanted, and that made her a unique character with a specific role where she was a foil to Light's corrupt morals. She only wanted to be useful to Light, not caring about her own life in the process. Yet in the movie, Mia is a completely different person. She's much smarter and more savvy than Misa forming her own plans and ideas even when they may hurt Light. Her love for Light only flows because of his ability to kill, and she covets that ability for herself because she doesn't believe Light's taking his powers far enough. And to be fair, she's completely right. The dude sucks at being smart and sucks at killing. If anything, Mia is the closest resemblance we get to Light in the anime. She's power-hungry, calculating, forward-thinking, believes that any life obstructing the creation of a new world is worth taking, and doesn't have frosted-tipped hair. She's completely ready to sacrifice Light for her ultimate goal, whereas Light doesn't seem 
seem ready to sacrifice anything but his virginity. He's certainly not fully committed to creating a new world, if he's committed to anything at all. White acts more like someone who has too much power with no plan of how to use it, and no desire to take risks when L starts coming for him. Mia actually takes the reins in terms of forward thinking in the film. Of all three characters, L is probably the closest to his anime counterpart. He does have moments of cold analysis which lead him to light, but even L gets overly emotional towards the end of the film. And that's completely against L as a character. L is supposed to be the other side of Kira's justice. For Kira, killing in the name of a new world as the one ruling god is completely justified, whereas for L, no one ruler and no killing will ever amount to any justice. L's personality is supposed to be based around his one-track mind. Find Kira and catch Kira. No emotions, nothing to block his thought process and he tracks who and where Kira is. That's the whole reason for why L sits all weird as well. His entire being is supposed to be about thought, facts, and logical reasoning. Yet when Watari dies in the movie, L completely loses any form of composure. He drops the calm, cool, emotionless persona L is known for and gives way to a full-on rage. That's not the L I wanted to see in this movie. He doesn't follow the character's personality correctly, and that really ruined movie L for me. That being said, this isn't three separate issues, but one major issue that affects all three characters. These characters are supposed to represent internal dialogues about justice and about what true justice is. But if one of these characters, like Light, doesn't play his role correctly or is written incorrectly, that's going to mess up the roles around him. If Light isn't trying to become the god of the new world by any means necessary, that changes Mia's character. If she was a ditzy girl without much thought behind her actions, Mia's character wouldn't fit with the new Light. Since Light is acting based off emotions instead of logic, it follows that L would do the same. If these two are supposed to be rivals and pitted against each other, they must use the same ideals when battling. In the anime, they both used logic to try and outthink the other. No emotions involved, and no line is too far. In the movie, they use emotion to push themselves, with only a little logic involved. It's a massive change to take out what both characters are best at in the anime, and to basically leave it out completely for Light and have L stray from logic as soon as Watari dies. All of this change in the characters completely throws off the ideas of justice in the film. Instead of the film symbolizing two forms of justice, both extremes, it only touches on the idea of right and wrong for a minute. That lack of a dialogue about justice makes the Death Note movie a completely different story than the Death Note anime. The characters are different, the plot is different, the themes are different. And those changes add up to an adaptation that was made to make money instead of revive a work of art. The original the original Death Note leaves you wondering about the world we live in, what you would do with the power to kill, whether or not people deserve to die for their mistakes, and whether it is possible to go too far for the sake of good. The movie merely makes you think that you shouldn't trust your girlfriend because she might try to kill you. And that's the true disaster of the Death Note movie. We had an opportunity to give the world a reenactment of one of the best shows ever created, but instead we got a lesson in how a girl can move from crazy hot to just crazy. But as always, that's just my opinion. One opinion of the many of you who watch the channel. Let me know what you think! Did you enjoy the movie for what it is? Or could you not get past the large gap the movie takes from the anime? I want to know your thoughts on the matter too. For those of you who have been with us for a while now, thanks for coming back over and over to analyze and theorize with us. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and check that bell for notifications so you know when we post new content. That's all for today. I'll see you guys in a few days. Bye everyone!